for now uh, we have really two things to do before we close up this episode first is uh, handle the accept and then cancel uh, using the cancel button the both buttons that we created in order uh, to do that I just want to refresh you uh, where this is coming from so if you go to the back end let's go to controller and then we have approval controller that be basically will be accept this is the request that we want to do and then we have uh, the rejection controller controller that basically will reject that will be our cancel uh, I think we could maybe add rejection instead the button probably will be more accurate reject we could be confused like oh, I'm canceling the pop-up but no we want to reject the event request right okay so initially the thing that we need to do here is making the request and for the request we will need the registration ID but also you need to remember that we changed a lot of things since that so verify token is not being passed for these things basically what we want to do now is add this middleware here and add this middleware here as well so we're going to uh, start by protecting this middleware and in order to protect that as you remember we can go to the create and you remember we will need this line here so we need the JWT we need to verify the process because this we can even copy into this part right because this is basically do what we want if you're not uh, if you're not the owner if you're not logged in we want to like send the request status 401 so let's do that first thing first let's go to let's go back to the approval controller and then basically we can delete this line and we can introduce the new one now I'm going to import JWT equal require this will be JSON web token and we will be good to go so the first thing I want to do is this then if and then else and then of course I need to wrap everything inside the else this is now let me check oh I need to add another thing here closing that and then this one will be there so apparently we are missing another one. Oh yeah we're missing the model export that's correct you get a registration you can say if registration if the registration exists we want to do that so then just to show you what I mean if you console.log the registration here all right let me see if that's working yeah so we want to see how does that look like and inside we're gonna have an event and let's let's also console log the auth data user right user so this is the both things that we are interested in. so if you go to the front end now and I'm gonna uh, register myself to the event but just to show you so if you go to my event we have this event here so I'll make a request so let, let's see in the front end now how that would work so initially what we want to do now you go back to the index in the side the dashboard and now here we want to create an accept handler right they accept event handler then we're going to create the accept event handler down here this is initially going to be a const an error function we're missing the equals here and we're going to use the api call that we had here the only difference will be this will be a post for registration 
it won't be for registration let's look the routes so it will be dash approval so it'll be the same thing pretty much so we'll go back there we want to add dash approval here and that should give us event ID I'll need to get from event I can get the event ID directly and this is will be passed down here and then basically here we can do a try and catch the same way we did so try catch this is basically we'll do the same thing and then of course the catch gets an error we want to console log the error if something goes wrong right so just to show you let's give it a space here and here now it looks much better so it seems that we have an error here oh definitely it's because this is needs to be a sync yeah so now we can test that right let's go to the front end if you filter by my own events i'll try to subscribe myself so I subscribe it we should get something uh, in our server uh, we get the user uh, not convinced oh, of course it didn't work because here we forgetting to do this and pass the event ID so the request is undefined so this is will be request dot id so we can come back there let's try that again my events subscription so now let's go back here mm. So we made the request now let's accept so they just notes that we have this unique key prop here this is coming from dashboard 120 so let's look here 120 here so we're passing a unique key value here not sure if that is working for some reason yeah let's do that again my events register okay S request failed with status code 400 so see how we get him defined here so that's why this is not working um, so let's add a, a console log here in the request to see what's what's wrong here oh i think it could be the id but let me have a look about that so if i go to my events create another event see that's why we having this issue and also i was right it is the id that we're missing here so we're missing both ids here and here is also the id right so now we can delete that and it should be correct now if you go here my events you do a registration request now we don't get this alert anymore and we can see this if we click here now we have a hit we don't have any error and if you look here so that seems that it worked so basically what we're doing here we have the registration we have the registration id uh, if you have this request 
when you click in accept we are changing the registration to true and saving it and returning that to the browser so let's go to the front end side so if we close all these other things that we are not using right now so if you go in the index here we can say here const response this is equals to await and then we can say console.log for now the response right and that's basically what we want to do so I will try again so if you go to my event register for that it will create event I will receive the notification and then that's the response with data approve it true so that's working exactly how we want it so what we can do uh, if we get the response status 200 that means that's okay here we can see uh, if you go to we can do like if response.status equal 200 we want to do basically mm, we can use this here right we can activate a success and set the message mm, let just me think how does that's going to look like I think we want to add something here right yeah, let's 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 add something here that will be more tailored for what we're doing so we can have events request message that will be here so we can say this is going to be a div this is will take event request message Uh, uh, basically we need to create that set event request message is a state that will be empty and then what we can do is say let just me think I think we can use an alert with a success caller like that instead okay so it'll be an alert here and then we close an alert there because this is responsive so it'll be way better for us if you go now to my events you click there yeah, so we want that to appear just if you have a state basically here we have like a success we can create another one now that will be const event request success and set event request success this will be use state false as a default and now we can check against this property so we can say do I have that show that otherwise show that that worked so now we can get the event request message now basically here what we want to say is set event request message to uh, we can say event approved successfully and also 
we want to set the event request. I think I, I have a typo there. I will fix that. This is will be set to true and set event message event request success. Yeah, why does that is marked gray? Oh no, no, it's correct. Oh wow, oh, 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 I know why that's wrong because we're missing brackets here. Now we're rendering that. My event. Yeah, so if I accept, I approve it. Basically, because we're inside a try and catch, I don't need to check that. I can do like so. And I will add a set timeout here that basically will set these to false and will set these to empty, like so. So now, if you go to my event registration, I accept, there's something that's not working here. Oh, I see. This is here. Oh, that was a stupid mistake. I'm restructuring instead of creating an array. Sorry, guys. At least we, we're debugging together so you guys can see what I'm doing. So if you request here again, accept. Yeah, now, now it did work as we expected. What we can do here is have a button group here basically and that will add a little bit of padding margin for us actually this will be even better there So now we can try again, my event, registration request, accept. No, <laughs> no, that's not what, what I wanted. Mm. That's because here is set to flex. Okay, uh, we can do that outside. If you go here, outside this, we have the ally here and then we can wrap this into this that probably will work my events registration accept we can remove now the button groups that probably will give us the low but it's I have a suspicion that because I copy and paste that we have any style there that is making that. Still not being the style. So I'll add that below here. And that will be basically outside. So if you do a re registration that's exactly what we need. Cool. Uh, so now that we have that, guys, basically we can do the same when we deny. The ideal solution would be to comp comp to create that a little bit uh, different. But I guess in this case here, what we want uh, is two and a half seconds. And basically, this is the accept event handler. Now we want to deny. It will be exactly the same thing. So I will just go ahead. I will copy this and paste. This is will be reject. We 
reject and here will be reject as well rejection uh, we're gonna do basically the same thing event rejected successfully and what we want to do here is pass this to the event handler like we did here so we want to pass reject here will be a request dot id oops id like so this is won't work actually it will work but we want to protect the route so basically if you come here in approval we want exactly the same thing so i can copy everything that we have here and that will be the easiest one and if you go now to the reject one what we want to do is delete this async here and then we're gonna paste that here but here will be false right so we want to make sure that we are turning that false now what I want to do we have the response here so what we can do to test that is go to the front end dashboard and basically we can do here now if you go there it's failing with 500 let's have a look here right we know that it's not failing here because both errors is 401 or 400 so I think we have the wrong route registration ID regist rejections here so approval oh I see we need to import this that's why it's failing So if you go now there, reject, event rejected successfully. We can even uh, console log event. So we can do here console.log registration. So if you reject, approve it false, right? So we know the event is not approved. And, and basically another thing that we need to do is after when we accept or reject you want to remove that from here right you accept or you either reject and then and then what right we can clean this because this is just mean to be a notification So in this case, now we have the events request, so we can do a map, right? We can create a function that will be const remove notification from dashboard this is will be equal function we're gonna get the event ID from it and then basically what we want to do is get all the events requests you do a filter you want to filter the event you want to filter the event basically where the event dot it equals to event id and this is will be equals to const new events 
and then what we can do here is set events to new events so how are we going to test that right so basically every time that we have an event we can pass this function here when we rejecting it let's test it here the event will be event id next time okay let me start doing a console.log here no let's console log inside events the notifications here events request so if you go now to my events you have a request you can see it's an object it has an id with something inside now if you click in the in reject So that log here, new events. So if you have an event, you go here. Now my events, you have a request. Yeah, you have one request inside. We we seeing all of this basically because first because we render the page twice, and second because I'm making a request to myself. So if you open a new tab let's do that properly if you open new incognito page I will go to the local host I will log in a test user here uh, let me create a new account test test this is will be user test uh, test.com and test now let make sure I can find the same events. So this is the 9999 and let me have a look if I find it. 9999, that is. So now if I register, you get just one request like we expected. And we have a request there. Now when you reject, it didn't filter correctly <laughs> oh because this is it's what we want to remove that's basically now we can test that again so basically I will open again the other page so if you go there I want to subscribe you have one event and if I reject now we no longer have events right and we set the right event however what's not right is that we need to make that to essentially I think I'm using the wrong things hold on events request oh that's why sets events request that's why so now we can remove that let's test again for the last time let's make a request exactly that's what we want All right and then basically if you had more events like we could subscribe to two different events uh, wh what i'm going to do to test that i'm going to go to the events page i will create a new event now uh, 
could be this one test final price 99 as well date will be any date cycling submit now I have another event so if you go in cycling 99 there we go one is cycling another one is swimming 99 so I'm gonna subscribe for both events basically it's 99 and 99 so I will subscribe to that and I will subscribe to that now if you go to the other page I have two requests we should make that a list um, okay like I'm gonna fix this style later but initially I want to see if it's going to delete the event when I clicked okay yeah deleted the one deleted the other one perfect now this style what's wrong with this style let's have a look so if you look here I mean mapping inside a list right and I am returning essentially a list with notifications I think let, let me subscribe to both events again and then I won't change that so we can approve we can change the request right so if you go now back there let's see what's wrong with this I think it's because here we made that flex yeah we don't need flex there so this was this is basically would fix that yeah yeah so basically we can go back here let's remove we have notifications down here let's remove this flex we won't need that and the other thing that I think we should go back here remove that when you reject and also remove that when you approve right and these both 250 I will change for 2000 I think 250 it was to fi 200 500 2500 was too long so now let's test for the final time so this is the original one let me open this page here I will subscribe for this event I will wait subscribe again both requests there look shiny I will approve and then I will approve as well cool so there there you go guys uh, this is was the episode where we fixed we we added basically the events and uh, we added the hat we added the navigation we add the drop down menu we fixed the style and the approval and the removal and the next episode we're gonna create a page where you can navigate to and basically we'll have a list of all the, the events requests because this is a, just a notification system right but what happens if you're not online you don't get those so we have a proper page where you can navigate and we can go there approve or reject and see the status as well so see you guys in the next episode